This is a new project I'm working on that's the first step of a multiple step project where I intend to build an extremely precise crystal oven to raise a device to a certain temperature and keep it there very precisely. And there are a few methods out there to already do that, but I'm interested in uh, reinventing the wheel a little bit and trying to make this from scratch. Uh, the first step in what I'm going to do is rather than just setting temperature, I want to be able to measure it very precisely. So to do that, I have this. This is an LM335 linear temperature sensor and it acts like a zener diode here and uh, if you apply some positive voltage to one side of it it'll allow some current to go through so that the potential at this point will be a number in Kelvin uh, so for example I have it set up here let's read from it I have a pin that I can put there and when that pin is red, it's going to both my voltmeter, which is showing 3.04 volts, and also going to my oscilloscope, and it's graphing the line. Uh, 3.04 volts means 304 Kelvin. So let's pop over here. Do 304 Kelvin in Celsius and also in Fahrenheit for the US people. And this is about 87 degrees. It's kind of toasty in here. Got a lot of computers going. So that's the current temperature, and my ultimate goal is to be able to amplify the voltage change through a small range. And the reason why is because I want to be able to measure temperature very precisely with the analog to digital converter on a microcontroller. I'm going to be using this microcontroller hooked up to the serial port to be sending temperature information out. Now the microcontroller has an analog to digital converter that's 10 bit, so it can only measure voltage changes between 0 and 5 volts in a series of 100 or 1,024 steps. So if I were to read the output of this, I'd really only have maybe one or two degrees Fahrenheit of resolution, and that doesn't help me a whole lot. I want to be able to measure this very precisely to the fraction of a single degree. So I need to amplify the range of interest out of this device. And for the example here, I set it up just to amplify the range between room temperature and my finger temperature when I hold it. Um, you can see right now that the output is three volts and if I pinch this it'll slowly go up. Now I'll eventually get to about 3.09 volts which means 3.09 Kelvin uh, which is about a little cold for my body temperature but it rises. Uh, anyway so the way that I do that is I set a lowest temperature of interest and then I set a gain and then uh, it outputs at the end of the day a voltage which swings all the way from zero volts to about five volts over only a few degrees and it does it linearly so I can measure very accurately. Uh, we already talked about how the voltage sensor works here the LM335. It uses a decoupling capacitor here just to eliminate some of the 60 Hertz noise and then it goes through one stage of an LM324 operational amplifier. Uh, this is not using a negative supply voltage, which is nice and uh, convenient. I made this work for a normal power supply, 0 to 5 volts. Um, it goes through a buffer stage and goes through the positive input. And the negative input is what I use to set the minimum desired lowest temperature. So in other words, I want to measure between room temperature and my finger temperature. I adjust this potentiometer so that the output becomes 0 and I can do that here. There are a few ways to do it. One way to do it would be to adjust uh, this point right here so that it's exactly 3.04 volts which is what I was read as my room temperature or since I have an oscilloscope I'll just kind of view the output and uh, adjust it accordingly. So I put that on the I put the oscilloscope viewing the main output and I will twist the potentiometer and I'll watch the oscilloscope and it kind of goes up and down and I adjust it so it just barely floats above the bottom. Oh, that'll work. It's uh, really sensitive. So right now the output of this device is about one volt. And um, it uses a sort of standard operational amplifier configuration. And it increases the difference between these two points by a factor of about 55. And you get that by the value of this resistor divided by the value of this resistor. Um, and it's important to note that this gain is not the normal gain calculation. Normally we'd have a resistor here to ground or something like that and it would go into it. It's not what I'd say linear gain because it's at zero for a long time and then it becomes linear. 
So it's the slope of the linear region that represents the gain rather than the actual function itself. Uh, it's pretty intuitive. So if I record from the output and I touch the temperature sensor, I'm just going to start touching it now, you can see it goes up really quickly. And you can actually watch it go up on the oscilloscope. And I'm still pinching it, and it's still getting higher and higher. Uh, and I've tried this a bunch of times, and I realized that um, eventually, at room temperature, it's 3.04 volts at this point, and the output reads half of a volt. After I leave my finger on for a full minute, this point reaches 3.09 volts, and this point reaches 3.22 volts, which is great. So with my region of interest, it swings a full 3 volts. This is fantastic to record with the analog to digital converter of an AVR, because not only do the, you have the option to use the 5 volt internal reference, but you also have a 3.3 volt, which is exactly uh, what I'm interested in. Um, but for these purposes, let's say we're still measuring 0 to 5 volts. That means that a voltage swing that was only 0 0.05 volts now is a swing of 2.72 volts, which is fantastic. Uh, with my 10-bit analog digital converter, a change in 5 Kelvin, which is 9 Fahrenheit, uh, divided by this value means that I have a resolution of 0 0.088 Fahrenheit. So that's less than a hundredth of a degree Fahrenheit that I can measure linearly. And if I really wanted to, I could uh, do some precision measurements at, along the way and get this to a very exact number. Uh, it might be a little bit difficult to know the exact low temperature and high temperature when I'm reading it from the microcontroller, but I'm not really interested in that. I'm rather interested in the fluctuating temperature. In other words, if it oscillates with a few hundredths of a degree Fahrenheit, I can measure that very precisely because I know every tick of this 124 levels is exactly this resolution. Even though I don't know exactly uh, on the you know 0 to 100 scale it is, I can tell very precisely small changes of temperature, if that makes sense. So this is the first step in a larger project, but I'm glad I got it off the ground pretty easily, and hopefully it's something that other people can benefit from as well.